Let's give this HDR RAW file a proper sunset look. I'm going to do this in Photoshop and as always, if you want to follow along, you can find a link to the RAW file in the description of this video. First, of course, we need to do the RAW adjustments. And let me tell you, I was struggling a lot with this shot. So what I want to do first is to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, just to bring up the base saturation a little bit. And you can see changing the profile also helps restoring a bit of details in those darker spots. Then we can go ahead opening up that basic panel and work on the white balance a bit. As I said in the intro, I want to turn this into a very intense sunset image and you have seen that in the after image. But I actually want to bring down the temperature of the white balance first. So let's do just that. And by bringing down the temperature, I'm just introducing some more blue tones towards the bottom of the image while not affecting this glowing blob right here. So I'm just slightly bringing down the temperature and I want to raise the tint a little bit, which helps bringing in some more red tones to the scene. All right, I think that looks good for now. Now, the reason I struggled with this shot was the exposure. Although this is an HDR image, it's really, really hard to restore this without making it look weird. So the first thing I want to do is to bring down the highlights and let's bring them down a little more. Just around here looks good. And you can see how the highlights in this area still look super, super weird. Initially, I was planning on shooting a sunstar, but the clouds were blocking the sun, so no sunstar for this image. This means we do have to fix this in another way. And I'm going to use a bit of heavy glow on this area, but more on that later. For now, let's continue with the exposure. At the moment, looking at this gram, there is still a little bit of underexposure. And the foreground of the image is just way too dark. We can fix that by bringing up the shadows. And this also helps reducing the overall contrast to create a soft looking image. I can further improve this effect by simply erasing the blacks, further bringing down the contrast and increasing that softness. Okay, I think that looks great. We want to keep working on that soft look. So what we can do next is to bring down the clarity this will especially make all those edges a little smoother and we can add a little bit of artificial haze by bringing down the dehaze. Just keep in mind, this will brighten up the image. All right, that looks super dreamy. Now let's also bring up the vibrance to add some colors. And here we have the image of the, the base adjustments. So here we have the original raw file and that's the edited image. You can see we do have a lot more colors and it's a lot softer overall. But of course we can enchant things a little more using a bit of masking. So let's go right ahead into the masking panel. And first off, I want to work a little bit on the foreground. Therefore I'm going to create a linear gradient. I just want to roughly target the foreground like this. And what I want to do here is to simply bring up the clarity since we actually don't need that soft look in the foreground where it's a lot darker. So by doing this, we are going to get back some detail in here, which looks really nice. Then I want to add a color range mask and I'm aiming and I'm targeting the blue parts of the sky like this. We can make use of the refine slider, bringing it down slightly maybe. And I actually also want to keep this part of the selection active. So what I want to do with this mask is to bring down the exposure and thus just adding a bit more contrast back to this image. Just be very careful not pulling down the exposure too much. Otherwise it looks weird around the leaves of the trees. All right. I think I want to add another color range mask right away, right there in the corner. And this time I'm going to subtract a linear gradient because I just want to target the upper right corner like this. And again, I'm bringing down the exposure to further darken this spot. Perfect. Now let's work on the problem area of this image, this glowing blob right there. As I said, I want to fix that using a bit of extra glow. So I'm going to create a radial gradient and I want to make it really big, covering all the width of the image, just like this. Maybe make it a little thinner like that. 
And what I want to do in here, first I want to raise the blacks slightly. Always keep in mind, if you raise the blacks, we will, you will lose a little bit of saturation in that area. So we have to counter that problem later on. But now let's continue by, I think I want to bring down the clarity. And of course, for that super awesome glow effect, I also want to bring down the dehaze. All right, that looks cool. But as I said, we did lose a bit of color. I want to fix that by simply clicking on this little color box right there. And I'm going to add a warm hue. So let's see, I want to stay in the yellow range, but I do want to bring up the saturation so the color is actually visible. Let's move that window right here and bring up the saturation. Perfect, let's do it like that. At this point, I'm quite happy with the glow effect. Let's continue working on the foreground. I want to use another linear gradient for that just covering the very near foreground without affecting those highlights. And here I want to further bring down the exposure. But at the same time, I do want to add contrast. This will make the darkest areas darker, but also it will introduce some highlights to the brighter areas. So I think on this part, it's a really, really cool effect. All right, and then I'm going to add another linear gradient pretty much covering everything except the sky right here like this. And I'm just using that to add a little more clarity, especially on the water and on the foreground where we don't need that heavy softness. Let's bring it up a bit more, but this looks great. And here we have the image of the, the masking adjustments. So we went from this to this. The light situation looks so much better with the masks. Now, we need to work on the colors. Let's do this. I am going to skip over the color mixer. I just want to apply some heavy split toning in the color grading tab. And as always, I'd like to start with the highlights. And since we're working with the sunset image, I'm going to apply a very warm hue first. I think I'm going with something in the yellow range again. And for this scene, I'm going to pump up the saturation all the way because I really want to have that intense color in here. Now let's head over to the midtones. And again, I want to use a very warm hue right here and quite heavily bring up the saturation. I think that's a very good spot right here. And at this point, you can see how the split toning really transformed this image from this to this. Of course, we did lose a lot of those blue color tones we can try bringing them back in the calibration tab. To do that, I'm going to go down to the blue primary hue and just drop it slightly. This will help restore some of the blue tones, but I don't think it's too important for this scene. However, bringing down the blue primary hue will also make those warmer tones more intense, so that's great. At this point, we can bring up the saturation as well to get those intense color tones and that's it. This looks super cool. Now the only thing that's left is a little bit of sharpening in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening. Perfect. At this point, let me mention, I forgot to reset the effects tab, which means we do have a little bit of vignetting applied as well. So here's the image without vignetting. And that's the scene with just a little bit of vignetting added on top. Now, that's it for the raw adjustments. We went from this HDR raw file to this edited version. However, we can still tweak it some more in Photoshop. So let's open up this object and continue. So the first thing I want to do is to get rid of a few tree branches up here in the image. If I'm just using this sport healing brush and just roughly paint over them because they are kind of distracting to me. Okay, I think that's good enough. I could get rid of this one as well, but I think it kind of adds a nice balancing element to this image. Next up, I want to fix the skewed horizon. So let me duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J and let me create a guideline so you see what I mean. Since I was using a very wide angle lens, you can see the surface of the water is kind of skewed. And this looks super distracting once you know it. 
So what I want to do is I'm going to use that guideline as a reference point and I'm going to hit Ctrl T on our duplicated layer, right click and choose Warp. Now with the Warp tool, I'm just clicking in the image and try to fix the water surface level. This is really a tiny fix, but once you see something like this, it makes a huge difference. So I think we're Gucci. Looks good to me, yes. At this point, let's warm up the area on the left side a little more. I'm going to head into the adjustment layers and use a photo filter for that. We can bring up the density some more, making this effect a little more visible. But of course, since we don't want to have this over the whole image, I'm going to invert its layer mask by hitting Ctrl I. Then let's grab the brush by pressing B. Set the foreground color to white and make it nice and soft like this. Now I'm just painting over the bright spot on the left, introducing some more warmth right here in this particular area. Perfect. Then I want to further enhance the glow. So for that, let's add a new layer. And on this layer, let's switch the blending mode to hard light. Again, use the brush but I'm going to set the foreground color to something warm like this. And it's really important on those hard light layers to bring down the brush opacity. Otherwise it looks way too strong. So let's go with something around 12%. And now I'm just carefully painting in a little more glow. Just on the brightest parts. All right, perfect. At this point, let's merge everything by hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. Usually I now would apply a bunch of Nick collection filters. However, let's try doing it without a plugin. What I want to do is to add more of this soft look. So I guess I'm just duplicating that layer again by hitting Ctrl J. Go to Filter, go to Blur and here we're choosing Gaussian Blur. I'm usually going with a radius around 30 pixels. That should be fine. Let's hit OK. And now let's go to Edit, choose Fade Gaussian Blur, change the blending mode to Lighten, and bring down the opacity. This creates a very, very soft effect, which always works great on those sunset scenes. So let's make it quite heavy. I'm going with a very high opacity this time. I think it looks good if it's over the top like this. So let's hit OK. We might want to mask it out in a few areas. So I'm going to apply a layer mask, grab the brush again and set the foreground color to black, bring back the brush opacity to 100%. And now I'm just going to paint over a few areas to bring back a little more sharpness. I'm just very, very selective here, just using just choosing a few darker spots, but this looks good to me this way. Then let's see, can we enhance the contrast a bit more? I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer and just trying to apply a simple S curve here, tickling out a little more contrast. Maybe bring up the point for the blacks a notch. But that's looking good, I think. Maybe bring down the opacity to really not overdo it. But let's keep it this way. And I guess we are done editing this HDR sunset scene. So if you have any questions left about the editing, as always, feel free to ask in the comments and I will try to answer them. So thank you very much for watching this video and hopefully see you guys next time.